When a cold wind blows, it chills you, chills you to the bone. And there's nothing in nature that freezes your heart like fear of being alone. And the worst of the worst, the most hated and cursed is the one that we call Scrooge. I don't know if those are the words, but there you go. Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Justin. I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. Today I'm going to talk about The Muppet Christmas Carol. The Muppet Christmas Carol is a 1992 theatrical release. It's directed by Brian Henson, cinematography by John Fenner, editing by Michael Jablo, music by Miles Goodman, and it's written by Jerry Jewell. Brian Henson is best known for Labyrinth, Muppet Treasure Island, Muppets from Space, and this. John Fenner is best known for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Message, The Wild Geese, and this. Michael Jablo is best known for The Last Castle, Hair, Old School, and she's the man. Miles Goodman is best known for Little Shop of Horrors, La Bamba, What About Bob, and Teen Wolf. Jerry Jewel is best known for The Muppet Movie, The Muppet Show, The Jim Henson Hour, and this. The film is based off a book called A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. It came out in 1843. This book has been adapted into films many times. I can think of three Disney versions right off the top of my head. I have already covered Mickey's Christmas Carol. It was a short covered it during a December special. I did not compare it to the book. So shall we compare? Ebenezer Scrooge refuses a dinner invitation from his nephew Fred. Scrooge refuses to donate to a charity and begrudgingly allows his employee Bob Gratchit Christmas Day off with pay. That night, Scrooge is visited by the ghost of his old business partner Marley, who has been cursed to carry chains and money boxes for his greed and selfishness. Marley warns Scrooge that he will end up worse if he doesn't listen to the ghost coming this night and make a change. The ghost of Christmas past arrives and takes him to scenes of his boyhood. The scenes include Scrooge lonely at boarding school, his sister, Mr. Fessywick's Christmas party, Belle ending their engagement because Scrooge Scrooge loves money more than her. And finally, a scene, the day of Marley's funeral, where Belle describes the man Scrooge has become and it upsets him. The ghost of Christmas present takes Scrooge to people making Christmas dinners, first to Fred's house and then to Bob Cratchit's where they meet Tiny Tim who is ill and Scrooge learns that Tiny Tim will die if events don't change. The spirit shows Scrooge two children named Ignorance and Want and warns against them. The ghost of Christmas yet to come shows Scrooge a Christmas day in the future where a funeral is being held for a disliked man by businessmen who were promised lunch if they came. The charwoman laundress and undertaker stole Scrooge's possessions. Scrooge demands to see someone with more emotion linked to his death, so the spirit shows him a couple who rejoice now that they can get their finances in order. Scrooge begs to see tenderness connected to any death, and the spirit shows him Tiny Tim's funeral. The spirit then shows Scrooge a neglected grave with Scrooge's name on it. And Scrooge vows to change. Scrooge wakes a changed man. He makes a large donation to the charity. He sends a large turkey to Bob's home. He spends the afternoon with Fred's family. He increases Bob's pay and starts to be involved in Tiny Tim's life. He treats everyone with kindness, generosity, and compassion. The spirit of Christmas. The end. I'd actually say this version of A Christmas Carol is very faithful to the book. Granted, I didn't have the access to like a, I mean, I could have spark noted it, I guess but like, you know, a nice summary. It was broken down into the staves and it was pretty much the points that every film that covers this movie does. I would say this one is really faithful because I feel like the part of the book that gets like maybe dropped or cut out the most are the people who steal his possessions. I think this is the only version I've ever seen with that. Um, I do think it's incredible that Mickey's Christmas Carol was able to tell the story in like 30 minutes when like every other adaptation is like an hour and a half or longer. But I'd say they're really similar. I think a Muppet Christmas Carol is very, the Muppet Christmas Carol is very faithful. Or a Muppet Christmas Carol? The Muppet Christmas Carol. The Muppet Christmas Carol is very faithful to the book. The film stars Michael Caine, Dave Gold, Steve Whitmire, Jerry Nelson, Frank Oz, Jessica Fox, and Stephen McIntosh. Michael Caine plays Scrooge and is best known for The Dark Knight, The Prestige, The Cider House Rules, and The Plied American. Dave, Steve, Jerry, and Frank, who all play uh, Gonzo, Kermit, Tim, and Miss Piggy, and also other characters, like they all play a bunch of different characters, are actually pretty much all known for The Muppets. A couple of them also were like in Fraggle Rock or in Sesame Street. One was even in Attack of the Clones. I'm pretty sure it was Frank. 
It's an Attack of the Clones. But otherwise, it's literally all Muppets all the time. Jessica Fox plays the ghost of Christmas past and is best known for Holly Oaks. Holly Oaks later, The Worst Witch, and this. Stephen McIntosh plays Fred, and he's best known for Underworld Evolution, Underworld Rise of the Lycans, Rang de Basanti, and Memphis Belle. This was the first film made after Jim Henson passed away, and Brian Henson directed it, and Brian Henson is Jim Henson's son. They originally were picked up to do an ABC television spot, but Disney offered to purchase the film and make it a theatrical release. Michael Caine was cast and he chose and verbally many times said he was going to play it straight like it was the Shakespearean theater, like there were no puppets, no winking at the screen, nothing. He wanted it to be played as straight as possible. They had a skewed city set, there were planks that Michael Caine could walk on because some of the floor would be removed if they were doing the scenes with the puppets. Um, Gonzo was chose as Charles Dickens because at, he, they thought it was the least expected choice to play Dickens. Um, Paul Williams did the music. And that's, that's that on that. The film was made for $12 million and made $27.2 million, so it was a modest success. It competed against Home Alone 2 and Aladdin, so being sixth opening weekend against those films is actually pretty good for it. Roger Ebert really liked the movie. He gave it three out of four stars, said it was technically fantastic and could have had more songs. Uh, it received mixed reviews. Otherwise, a lot of people praised it a lot while others were like, you know, it's a friggin' Muppet movie. It has a 74% on Rotten Tomatoes. I have to start with my brother loves this movie. I have never actually seen it all the way through, which is, I'm, I hadn't really even seen a lot of clips from it. Last year I saw pieces of it because we finally watched it while we were baking because Disney Plus came out. And uh, so I saw pieces of it, but sitting down and watching it for this, I realized how much I did miss while we were making cookies. Um, Eric loves this movie. He listens to the music every Christmas. It's part of his Christmas playlist. So I knew the music better than I knew the film, especially the when a cold wind blows, it chills you, that song, like I know. And then the ones after that, I know, I've heard, but I don't know as well as that one. And I think Eric was very excited for me to watch this film because he loves it so much. And I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. I thought it was, I am I agree with Roger Ebert in that it was technically fantastic. I was so excited and giddy about the way they introduced Scrooge with like the walking to the beat and his cane and only his feet and a shadow of the figure. And then at the end when like he turns at the end of the song, he turns around and it's Michael Caine and it was, oh, I thought the Scrooge introduction was so well done visually and like with the song, you know, you're hearing all about him, but you haven't seen his face yet. And then finally at the end, you. I thought that was so great. And then they used a lot of like angled shots in the film, not so much a Dutch angle, which is like full on angle, like Amy and the detectives, but just a little bit angled to give you like certain skews. And I thought it was fun. I thought it suited the story. I thought a lot of the cinematography decisions were so well done. It was well written. It was a great adaptation of A Christmas Carol. Michael Caine is obviously an incredible actor, always has been, and he did play it straight like there were no puppets. And it helped me take the movie a lot more seriously, even though like there were puppets and the puppets were making jokes and all of that. But like I was able to like suspend my dis disbelief even farther because of how much Michael Caine was serving the story instead of it being like, haha, this is funny, a funny version of A Christmas Carol. like. Michael Caine absolutely playing it so straight made me suspend my disbelief even farther and like get there with him. And I didn't cry, but I got a little emotional when Michael Caine was like full on crying and was emotional at the grave scene. I thought he did a really good job and I got a little bit like, ooh, ooh, I'm starting to feel it, but I didn't cry, which is surprising because lately I feel like I'm crying at every movie that even has a little bit of emotion, so. That's everything I have. That's everything I have for The Muppet Christmas Carol. My final rating is eight ghosts out of 10. However, my, my opinion is like a seven, but I feel like we're gonna start getting into this where I think every piece was good. Like there's a high score, like, you know, like I thought the directing was really well, well done and I thought the acting was really well done and whatever. But then just purely on my opinion, I give it a lower score just cause like maybe I didn't enjoy it as much, even though like all those pieces were well done. And that's kind of where we are right now. Like I would, if I wasn't factoring in all those other things, I'd probably give the movie a seven. 
but because I've been factoring in all those things, the movie is getting eight. So just be sure to keep checking out the full breakdown of the rating down in the description because sometimes you might be surprised. I might end up giving like acting a solid 10 because like the actors were so great, but I didn't like the movie and I give it like a six or something. Like, who knows, you know? Um, that's not this. This one had like pretty much received all eights except for the seven. So of course it's an eight. Um, yeah, okay. Our total movie count is. Parent death toll and cry count are still the same. If you want to keep up with what movie I'm watching when, follow me on Instagram or Twitter. You'll find out what movie I'm watching when. I put up videos every Monday and Friday and sometimes Wednesday. Join my Patreon. It is four tiers. You can get early access to videos. You can get live streams and bonus content and Q and A's and all that good stuff. If you join the third tier, you can get monthly postcards from me. They're Disney themed. They're very cool. I just bought a giant box of them and they're stunning pieces of art. And uh, the fourth tier is you can get like Skype calls from me and personal vlogs and all that fun stuff. So go check out my Patreon and join it, okay? Thanks. There's also still a soft launch of merch. That'll be in the description as well. This is not official, official merch. This is still a testing period. So if you're so inclined and you like the simple design, by all means, go ahead and buy it. Until next time, comment, subscribe, and I'm gonna try if you are, so you do, and don't be... Scrooge learns his lesson. I can't really, well, don't be Marley then, I guess in that case. Don't be Marley. Yo, this comes out on Valentine's Day. Hey, do, 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 do. Happy Valentine's Day.